Good morning, Parkside. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope you took advantage of our daily devotional yesterday where we were able to pray together. Uh, and it's a good practice as we go through this whole time, uh, whatever, uh, whatever comes in the next weeks, months, years, we don't know what that looks like. But it's good to always return to prayer. That's kind of our uh, first instinct in all of this. So I hope you took advantage of that. If not, uh, feel free to check that out from yesterday. Today, I'd like to kind of continue on thinking about uh, Pastor Gary's sermon on Sunday was about being the church in exile. That's a good way to think about this time. Uh, Paul says that we have our heavenly citizenship, that is, Christ is our citizenship, and he is currently at the right hand of the Father. And so we have that, that distance where there's this little bit of, we aren't where we're, we belong fully yet. So we're kind of like pilgrims. We're on the way to something, on the way to this new heavens and new earth, uh, Christ's kingdom that's coming. And so right now, it's helpful to think of our time as kind of being in exile, like the Old Testament. Um, in Jeremiah 29, the prophet says, settle down and seek the peace and prosperity of the city. So make yourselves at home. You're going to be in exile for a while. So today I want to talk about what does that look like to think about uh, being in exile? How do we think about that? What's going on as we're in exile? How can we rest in that? And Paul, in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, uh, there's this beautiful long hymn about who Jesus is. This is an, an early church hymn that they would sing uh, when they were together. And uh, halfway through... Paul switches and starts talking about what Christ is actively doing now. Uh, what does the person of Christ mean for us today? And in verse 19 of Colossians chapter 1, he says this, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, that is Jesus Christ, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through the, his blood shed on the cross. So Paul here says, that Christ is reconciling all things to himself, whether things in heaven or on earth, making peace by his blood shed on the cross. That word reconcile is kind of the, this idea of bringing two things together and healing them. So Christ is somehow in the process of reconciling all things, everything. He is somehow in the process of uh, knitting, stitching things back together so they can heal over. And so as we think about that, uh, as we are kind of resting in this exile, resting in this time as exile, especially as the church in a nation that is, uh, sometimes has uh, this attitude of being under God, but also sometimes it's just like all over the place, uh, fragmented across the board. As we think about being the church in that culture, we have to realize that even though things look bad, Christ is reconciling all things as we speak, doing that deep work right now. And this is where this gets really cool. Uh, Paul calls the church, he calls it the body of Christ. And that's not just about us being together as the body, but that's also like we are actively Christ's actual body doing some of that reconciliation work. So here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul kind of gives almost the, the mission statement of being the church. Uh, in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. So we're new creations in Christ. We're different than we were. And it's not just like upgraded from your bad self before. It's now like completely different, new a new heart, a new kind of creation. And he's talking about being in Christ as explosive and vibrant and beautiful as the original creation, but just new. It's a very important phrase for us. In verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So we're reconciled to Christ. Uh, we're healed to God in Christ. But then we have this ministry of reconciliation. Not just pastors, not just the elders and deacons, but all of us. Uh, verse 19, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And 
He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. So, Christ is reconciling all things to himself right now. Somehow making that reconciliation process work. Fixing everything. Healing everything. And in the midst of that, those of us who are in Christ, who have professed Jesus as Savior, we are reconciled to God in Christ. We are healed. We're these new creations. And God has given us this ministry of reconciliation. It says that we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. So we are the ones who are ambassadoring uh, this reconciliation work that Paul's talking about. We are the ones who are in the process of being kind of on the front lines doing that. And so if you think of ambassadors, uh, they have to know their own culture, like know, understand how being in Christ works, what it means to be a person in Christ, what my identity is, what's expected of me, what does God think about me? He's forgiven me. I'm a new creation. I'm loved as much as he loves Jesus. Uh, I'm not counted, my sins are not counted against me. I don't have to have shame. I can have peace and grace and love and mercy that all flows from Christ. Those are the things about our culture of being in Christ. And we also have to know the other cultures that we are uh, reaching out to. Ambassadors know both sides, not just their own culture, but also the other cultures around that they are ministering to. So I think this is important for us, especially as there's so much uh, race talk and prejudice talk. It's good for us to be able to understand and listen to those that are different than us, who have different life experiences than us. A good default way to approach the situations is to listen well. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. That's part of our calling in Christ, is to be excellent listeners. And this is one of the most important things I've ever learned in my entire life. The best way to listen is to listen to understand, not listen to respond. I'll say that again. Listen to understand, not listen to respond. So if you've ever been in a conversation, uh, and this happens to me a lot, even with practice, this is still hard, but having conversations where you're listening to someone, and as they're talking, you're already kind of focusing on what you're going to say next. You think, hmm, okay, I kind of get they're saying, I'm going to say this and this and this and this and this and this. But when you do that, when you start formulating your own response, you're completely focusing on yourself and not that person anymore. Instead, when you actively listen well and focus in, listen to understand, that's how you're being Christ's ambassador. You're listening to understand their experience, their culture, uh, the way they've experienced life. Not listening to respond to them or correct them or fix them, but listen to understand first. And that is how we have grace. That is how we live graciously. Um, and so in this time, I encourage you to think of yourself as reconciled to God. You are at peace with God. God is not mad at you. He loves you deeply. And God loves this world. God so loved the world that he sent his son. So we have this rich story of the gospel to proclaim. And we have this rich ministry of reconciliation, telling people that they can be reconciled to God too. And the way that we do that is know and stand firm in who we are in Christ but then also listen to understand others' experience so that we can slowly allow the Spirit to do His reconciling work. So I encourage you today to practice listening. When you're in a conversation with someone, remember, you know what, I'm not going to listen just so I can say something next. I'm going to give this person my entire focus so I can understand them and show them grace and show them mercy. That's the, the deepest thing that we can do right now. Uh, so I pray uh, that you have an experience like that today, that God brings you into an opportunity where you can listen well, listen to understand, and that you also have a chance to share the gospel even through your words, your actions, uh, be able to declare who Christ is to people in a gracious and loving way. Uh, this is a, a difficult time right now, but it's also a very uh, good time for us to process through these things adjust what needs to be adjusted, and become more gracious and peaceable people, uh, better 
gospel people. So I pray that over you this morning. Uh, and thanks for joining me. I'll see you later on this week. Bye.